So let's now talk about something that is very uh, unique, I would say, or quite unique to the GPM model, the green light product management model. And it's um, the colors, we talk about perspectives, uh, two models and the documents. So here we can really see the essence now, we will see about the model and key concepts that we need to know and get to know that can really help us to do a good job in our daily work in the, in the projects. This part also, uh, well, it, uh, is also very important when it comes to understanding and helping to get the common project culture. Because these different concepts we will see here now, then with the colors, perspectives and models, etc., uh, really helps to get the common way of working in the, in the organization or in the company. So we have this, uh, this overall picture or overview picture. Uh, we will, uh, we will uh, talk about all these things here. We will talk about the product life cycle model. We will talk about the business perspective. We will talk about the organizational model. We will talk about the human perspective. And we will talk about knowledge areas. Um, <clears throat> we talk about templates and checklists. We talk about applications, terminology. We will talk about structured, agile and hybrid projects on a high level. Many of these things we will go deeper into in, in other uh, parts of this course and in other courses in this course suite. Let's start with the four colors. So we have the red, yellow, green and blue color. And all of them represent different things. As you can see here, we can have a red col color a cap on. Let's start uh, have that on. We can also have a blue color and the uh, yellow cap also. So here we have the red color then. Well, let's put on that cap. Um, the red color uh, in one word means business. It means <coughs> that we represent the project and the program sponsor, the product steering group on the governance board, the product portfolio owner, the product steering process, and that we also make business decisions. Here we will talk, you will see later on in the continuing course, we use the, uh, the toll gates to make this, uh, decisions, go or no go decisions. As you can see, it's talking about business, it's a lot about ensuring that we use the money in the best possible way and that we create the most possible value here also in the products that we do. Then we have the blue color. Blue color for project management. So here with the blue color, we represent the product management process, the program manager, the project manager, sub project manager, with sometimes a little bit yellow, blue, a little bit mixture, but uh, typically blue. We also could have a product core team with product administrator, product planner, configuration manager, etc., that is supporting the product manager. And then we also have all the knowledge areas. They are also blue, these ones. Um, we put them blue because here we actually uh, see the knowledge areas is actually the whole process, what, what the product manager and the product core team should be working with. So that's why they are blue also. Then we have the yellow color. The yellow color is the, representing the operative work or the actual things going on in a project. Uh, executed then by the project members, the teams that work in the project. We also call it the project work model. We'll see that more in detail what it is. Um, but also think about processes, methods, tools. They're also yellow. And typical other roles here involved and that are also yellow using yellow caps are the resource owner, the receiver, the process owner, scrum master or product owner. Then we have one color more, the green color. And the green color represents the result or the product outcome. The product outcome then uh, could be actually the deliverables that we have from the product. Any deliverable, software, hardware, uh, services, solutions. Uh, if you build a house, the actual house, etc. These are the deliverables out from a project. And during the project, we also have milestones. Milestones we typically represent by this triangle, 
green triangle. So during the, we will see that later on in the planning that we set uh, intermediate goals that we call milestones for things that we are to deliver at a point in time. Could be uh, something we really deliver, but it could also be documentation or, or something that uh, we, we deliver, anything that we deliver from the project. The actual deliverables we also represent with this green hexagon. So, uh, so this is the deliverables. The model. So let's have a closer look at the product life cycle model. This one decides what to do and when we are to do something. And the product life cycle actually form parts of the organization's complete process. All organizations have management processes and they also have operative processes. Uh, all, always. And as we said them before, the management process is about business and we represent them with the red color. The operative part is represented by the yellow, uh, yellow color. And that's actually what is going on. And as you remember the exercise we did earlier here, when we needed to decide whether we should do something as a project or not as a project. Um, and if we decide that we should do something not as a project, then we only have the red and the yellow processes. But if we decide that we should do something as a project, then we also introduce this part, the blue part here in the middle. So we will use uh, uh, our product management process or our product management model like GPMM to execute the work uh, in the company. So then we have also the blue color. And as you can see here, once again, the green color representing the deliverables we will have from the product. If you look into this picture a little bit more in detail, it can look like this. And we will see then the product life cycle uh, of the whole product, which then starts here and ends here. And it starts with a uh, uh, Sometimes, we, not always, we, we, we paint it actually at Tollgate Zero. So it could be the decision point here in the beginning to start the project. And then we have Tollgate 1, Tollgate 2, Tollgate 3, Tollgate 4 and Tollgate 5 to decide which we should continue or not with the project. Uh, the whole life cycle is also divided into different uh, sub-phases. We will see that now in the next slide. So this is the product life cycle again. Here you can see target zero to target five. I said something before about target zero. Sometimes we have this one painted and sometimes not, but it's actually a decision we make to just start up th something. It could be a very formal decision like here, but it could be less formal also like we saw in the previous picture. So it, it just starts the project or someone decides something in a meeting. But it could be very formal also that we have a steering group meeting and we make this target zero decision. And then as you can see then, we divide, which is very strong, we would say in the GPMM model, we divide all the processes into these three levels. The red, the blue and the yellow level. Meaning, because it creates very good uh, product culture. Because if you look into these two, the red and the blue here, these parts are basically always the same, independently what type of product we are to run. Because we need to decide and manage the product on, on the steering level and do the governance of the project. Uh, and we also need to manage the product, plan and manage the product, which is the blue part. Then we have the yellow part down here. And this one can vary every time. So we have is what we call a product work model. And it's, of course, very different if you are depending on the project. If you are to build a house or if you are to um, develop a software or uh, um, deliver a customer project, like a telecom project or something to a customer, it could be very different here. Or if you are to do a marketing project. So the actual activities will vary totally depending on, on the type of project. So this project work model uh, varies for uh, every project or for every type of project. While, as I just said, the red and the blue part, they are the same all the time. And that is, of course, very strong then because many projects, I'm sorry, many companies have different types of projects. 
We could have custom products, R&D, development products, new products. We could have internal ones. But you will always recognize then the red and the blue part. While this yellow part will be different then depending on the type of product that is to be uh, managed. But it helps then of course because people will recognize, yes, I know what the target is. I know all the face names, etc. I know we need uh, to... Uh, 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 make these decisions with the target and so, so So these parts are always the same. Anyhow, let's have a look then on the blue part a little bit more. We have, as you can see here, different phases. We have a product analysis phase in the beginning, where we really look into how shall we do this, have a high level on the requirements and, and the content of the product and the scope of the product. Then uh, in the next phase, we have the product planning phase, where we go deeper into uh, really setting the requirements and the scope of the product, and also plan the whole project. And then, from target to a very important go-no-go -go decision, we will start the execution of the product. And the execution of the product could start with an establishment phase, we go even a little bit more setting things into a motion here, that things that we have planned. And then we start to realize things and deliver things and we do a handover both to the customer maybe or internally to the receiver, the ones receiving the outcome of the project. And finally we also close down the project with the project conclusion phase. As you can see here also a, close a way to connect the blue part with the yellow part we have milestones, these green triangles. So that we need to deliver to be go from one phase to another, we need to have done something, uh, completed the project analysis phase, uh, analysis reports, for example. Or if you take a later one here, then when we start to deliver, it could be many deliveries many times, typically nowadays, most products deliver more than once. So we could have several delivery milestones there. And to really do this delivery, we need to uh, fulfill a number of internal requirements to ensure that delivery is uh, good enough. Here represented also we see the outcome here, so these deliverables then uh, uh, that we actually deliver could be at, in this case at the end, but it could be many of these hexagons here along the way for the projects. This is an example of a project work model, it could be anything. But uh, this is just to give, give you an idea. Here you can see then five different uh, parts. This could be what we will see later on, a part of a WBS, work breakdown structure. So we will have these different activities in the project uh, to, to, uh, on the high level, uh, high level activities. They could be broken down much more in detail, but just to give you an idea. So in this case, we'll have an analysis, a definition of the requirements, high-level design, and design then and test uh, iterations several times, and maybe then finally delivery and acceptance uh, of what we have uh, prepared. So in that sense, as you can see, this is one typical product, could be a software development product, it could be something else that we are preparing, could be whatever product, hardware, or uh, uh, something being developed for this customer. And, and this is a way to show it. But it could be something totally different, as I said. It could be building a house. So then we define the activities here needed to build a house. But, repeat, I repeat myself, the red part and the blue part is always the same. We always need to have a good governance of what is going on, and we need to do all the product management activities. You will see later on, but these are typically all the activities defined in the 11 knowledge areas that we see here in the blue part. Let's have a look at this one, the organization model. Who is responsible for what and the roles? Actually, before we start going to this one, I can also mention that when this model was first defined, we actually only focused on the product lifecycle model. But to be successful continuously in projects, we realized that we uh, happen. We need really need to pay, take a much wider view on this, and not only look at the individual projects, because uh, uh, typically big organizations have many projects going on at the same time. 
and to ensure that all the products are successful, you have to take a very wide look at this and a wide perspective of it and thinking of these other perspectives also. That's why we have all four here, not only looking into the product life cycle, but also the organization model and the business perspective and the human perspective. So let's have a look at this organization model then. We symbolize it like this. This could be a stakeholder map and we will look into stakeholder management more in detail later on. <clears throat> so we have then the steering function of the uh, project, the governance board for example, the steering group, the sponsor, product portfolio owner. We have the product function, uh, uh, product management function with the product manager, product planner, etc. And we have the product executing function, then the people that are really doing the work or really rowing the boat, if you say like that. So the, the people that are really executing something here in the teams or something. So I mean the, the designers, the testers, the construction workers or whatever we have in our product. We will explain this picture more later on when we talk about stakeholder management, but we also have gray areas and so around. And here you have some examples then of roles that we see in the product, the product manager, program manager, the resource owner, the PMO manager, sub-product manager, product members, agile team if it's a team, the receivers of the outcome in, inside the company, governance board, steering group, and also you have the product portfolio owner and sponsor here. So this, uh, using these colors and so also, we can then identify all the stakeholders that we have in the product. This one this is a map for an example, but typically it's actually even wider and we will see that later on when we look into stakeholder management because we also need to consider stakeholders outside in the project, not only the ones we have here inside the product. So let's now talk about the human perspective. Very important to create a good product culture in the company because as you know um, it's a we don't work alone typically in the projects. We have a lot of people working in our projects, or well, sometimes a lot and sometimes not that many, but we are typically not working alone. So as a project manager or as the, the environment here we're working, we need to uh, be good in the human part. Sometimes we say that the project manager actually communicates 90% of the time, meaning that we have to do, communicate in a good way, to ensure we get the best possible motivated uh, co-workers in our project. So we need to be good in considering teamwork here, work in teams and have all the aspects in place and doing the best possible teamwork and that people are happy and, and uh, working in the same direction. We should be good leaders of course then, good in communication, good in uh, leading people in general, telling them what to do in a good way, etc. And, and ensure we have the best possible uh, leadership in the project. Individuals, it says down here. Yes, because we are all individuals and we still need to take into, take into account the, the expectations on e from each individual in this particular project. Because we all have expectations and anything we are involved in, we have expectations. We want things to happen. We want to do interesting work. We want to learn new things. And so, so when we assign uh, the different activities in the project, we need to take into account each individual and their interests also. Of course, we cannot fulfill all expectations from everyone, but at least we should try to do as good as we can. In parallel, we also talk about these attitudes. Uh, so, uh, and uh, alignment, respect, commitment, involvement and confidence, these things can help you to think that these, these are like um, uh, these attitudes that we need to uh, try to fulfill all the time, so that people are aligned with what we should do, that they are committed, that we show respect between each other that we show involvement and really get involvement because if people are involved, it, they will probably or most likely perform much better. And then we have to have confidence and trust in each other. So, so we need to ensure that we have this type of environment in our project, building up then uh, um, this culture, let's say, in, in our particular product when we start it up. <clears throat> 